Uh, but without further ado, uh, I'm going to introduce to you all the way from Antigua by way of the Bronx, Woo! New York, Scarab Boy. Let's give it up. Woo! Woo! I'm actually not as amazing as he's claiming. <laughs> yeah, he kind of like, so I'm like, who's that guy? Oh, that's, oh, really? <laughs> you know, but yeah, man, it's just like, it's just a pleasure to be here. Thank all of you for taking the time to just attend this, you know. I used to go to like secular festivals and whenever I heard like the speaking and the, the educational part, I'd be like, where, where, that way? Okay. <laughs> You know, so it's like, if I was a kid, I would definitely be rock climbing instead of coming to listen to, like, you know, us, <laughs> you know, so I really appreciate the time that y'all took to spend with us. When my aunt passed, we didn't really have a home church, but one of the ladies that stayed in our house, she was from Trinidad, and she always went to church. So her pastor came, and, you know, he spoke to us, and he, like, saw over the funeral, and the way he spoke, it wasn't like the other ministers, because like when you grow up in the hood, the most most of the ministers, there's two type of ministers. There's either like the Catholic minister, just like, oh, Father, you know, or the the, the, pen, the Baptist minister, like, wah, 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 you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, both had their time and place. But when this guy spoke, it was like, I understood everything he was saying. Like, I could relate to what he was saying. I could relate to where he was coming from, where he was at. And you know, I was like, oh, this is a pastor? Like, this dude is getting down. He's like a grown man. He's like in his 60s and, you know, 50s, 60s. Old man. You know, when you're a kid, everybody old before they got gray hair. You know, so I was like, oh, all right. I like this guy right here. I'm going to start going to his church. So I went to him, told him who I was. And, you know, so then around 2009 is when I fell into the EDM scene. Because before 2009, the only EDM song that I've ever heard and could remember was Sandstorm. <laughs> Other from that, I didn't, I didn't hear any EDM. And if I did hear it, I would like turn it off. You know, I was like, what is this? It doesn't have any words. Like, I like words in my music. I like percussion. I like beat. I like rhythm. You know what I'm saying? So I would like turn it off. So when the EDM guys came to hook me up, which is, you know, I'll say their names like Diplo and Switch yeah, and the rest of the major label crew. Since this has been going on for 20, 30 years, and as long as the rave scene's been there, there's been Christians doing this. And, and God, just as the rave scene crept up, you know, just rose up, uh, so did Christians in this. Um, one of the things, you know, we've got a lot of, a lot of founding fathers, you know, that we owe you know, a lot of gratitude uh, to because we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing today if they didn't pave the way. You know what I mean? So, so we give them respect, support one another. You know, sometimes it's just, hey, brother, I respect what you're doing. You know, we need to grab onto that because that's what's really going to grow this scene. Uh, and, and I believe that we are at the door. We are at the threshold. You know, right now. And man, one of the things I share with kids, like, man, we can. The word says, "Sing unto the Lord a new song." Man, we've got a new song right now in this culture. Let's let's do it. You know what I mean? That's I mean, God has given us a door of opportunity. Let's walk through it. And not just not just with our own agenda, but let's walk through it together. Get it tight together as one. 